Now, if you've got a router at home, it may not necessarily be an Apple AirPods Extreme. It could be just one from your internet service provider. On the back, you will have some ports and you may or may not use these ports. They are, if it will focus, which it won't, yes it will, there we go. They are ethernet ports and you plug an ethernet cable like this one here into there and then you put the ethernet cable into the other end into your whatever device it is that you want to put onto your network and there we go bob's your uncle uh, now a lot of people go wireless of course but if you want to expand your network and you want to do it wired you very quickly will run out of the ports that are on the back of your router typically three or four so then you may get something like this this is a really cheap unmanaged switch this particular one is by tp link it didn't cost very much at all and this is a typical eight port uh, switch so there on the back are your eight ports so you need one to connect from this to your router and then the other seven you could use just to connect in devices from uh, around your home or office or, or wherever and that works fine these things work particularly well they're really good they're cheap and cheerful they do the job but they're not particularly sophisticated so if you want to do something more advanced, such as bonding ports together, uh, creating um, uh, link aggregation ports, for example, or uh, looking at quality of service where you're prioritising certain network traffic, all that kind of stuff, then you'd want to move on to something like this. Now, this is my Cisco switch that I've replaced that TP link one with. And this is also a port. But the advantage of this switch is that it comes with some, uh, it's a managed switch, it's actually a smart managed switch, which means that you get some software that you can look at through a web browser and then you can configure uh, things that might make your network run a little bit better. Most people wouldn't want to do that, but I did. Now, for example, if I look back here, these two cables here uh, run to the other end of them is here this is my uh, raid my Synology disk station and in the back you'll see that's uh, the other end of those cables that are in that black one uh, and that is a treated by both the raid and the switch as a single port it means it can send traffic down either cable and it decides which is the the best most efficient way to transmit the data so I don't get double the speed but I do get a way of sending data to that device uh, more than one lane of traffic, if you like, it's a bit like having a, a dual carriageway. You can, you can, if something's clogging up one route, then or one lane, then you can uh, go down the other one. That's pretty much how it works, really. Now, these two cables here, these two grey ones, are doing a similar thing on my Mac Pro. So, when you look over there at the jumble of cables, you can just see there are the two, oh, the two cables going into the bottom of my Mac Pro. And they also are treated as a single port. They're bonded together in MacOS, which means that, again, is treating it as one uh, port. And then it can decide, again, which uh, way to send traffic down. So it goes down here. The switch is treating, really, these four are really two ports. That's two. That, those two are one, and those two are one. And then we go over here, and the same thing over here. So you can see that your device is not just your switch, but your other devices need to be able to cope with that kind of thing as well. Now this Cisco switch with the managed software does, can do an awful lot and I probably was stuck with it, but for two things. Uh, number one, I filled all the ports up. So actually you can see that there's one empty one actually there on the right hand side, that is empty. It's because the, my office is in a bit of a state and I've actually unplugged, that's the one for the printer. And the printer's uh, just sitting over there at the moment, uh, not used and I need to get that back on my network, so I'm going to use it wirelessly temporarily, but I really I want to use it as a uh, wired, so that will go back in that port there, I did in an ideal world, but I have, I've run out, I've run out of port. So, I want to get a switch with more ports in it, and the obvious thing to do, because I'm going to be putting a rack in this corner of the office here, in this mess, uh, would be, was to get a rack mounted port, rack mounted switch, sorry, with more ports on it. Get the words out. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to unbox the rack mounted switch. Let's watch that. So here is the Linksys LGS326 switch in its box. So let's 
as the video title suggests, unbox it. So there it comes. Now, first thing we've got in the box is a CD with a documentation on it. I don't imagine that there will be anything else on there other than documentation. Next, we have the ubiquitous quick start guide and uh, it's not going to tell us an awful lot, I don't imagine. Uh, yeah, okay. Oh, it tells us how to fit the rack mount, which we will be needing. So, let's have a look and take the switch itself out. And let's remove the little pot of stone from the end. And it's quite heavy, actually, quite a weighty piece. Uh, I mentioned earlier that there were two versions of this switch and the other version is a power over ethernet switch and I can imagine that that would be considerably heavier than this one. Uh, so let's just have a little look on the front of the switch and we have our 24 main gigabit ports and then we also have two extra ports here which are combo ports actually so these ones are linked together SFP port so that's actually port 25 and 26 which are combo ports and that's about it really not much else to look at on the left hand side of the switch there's this uh, panel which has a system reset there and uh, that's about it really so on the back as you'd expect we have the hole for the power adapter. Now there's something that I'm pretty sure about by looking here and see what else we've got in the box. Let's have a look. Uh, there is a power lead. Now I was led to believe looking at the uh, information about this switch online that this had some sort of transformer on the plug which I was surprised to read if I'm being honest, I didn't. I thought it, the power supply would be integral inside the unit, and it appears that it is, because this is literally just the power lead, that's all it is. So I was hoping to plug this switch into my UPS, and now it looks as if I will have no issues doing that, which is good. Now, here we have the rack mount. I'm not gonna take, take all of this out. Uh, well, it's just very simple, isn't it? Look, little brackets that will connect on the side because this switch is actually a full 19 inches. So it is, it doesn't need a particularly large bracket. It's just the easiest bracket fitted on the side. There's the little bracket there, which will go on and then it will be able to connect onto my rack. Lovely. There we are then. So that is everything that you get. Yep, that's nice and light. Now, everything that you get in the box for the Linksys switch. So the Lynx's switch will be replacing the Cisco switch I showed you earlier. And the quick progress report, if you've been watching my network series, you'll see there is color on the walls. Look at that nice bright color. Excellent, pleased with that. And the rack will be going here just as soon as this radiator uh, has been taken out and a smaller one put in. But I'm, I'm talking about something that's in my network series. If you're interested in that, then there is a link to that on screen right now, so you can watch it and see what's been going on. If you want to see my new Linksys switch in use, then that will be coming in part three of my network series when I'll be putting the rack in. So things are wrapping up. Thanks very much for watching. You can contact me on social media, details of which are on screen, and uh, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.